Praise God. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Uh, we praise God for his goodness, uh, his faithfulness that has brought us to see this new year. Indeed, as the many of us that have been here have already said, we have come this far by his help. And we praise him for bringing us to see this year. I take this opportunity to, to thank you for finding time to come and worship with us. Each one of you who is here physically, the Lord bless you. I also take opportunity to appreciate you, a child of God who is worshiping with us. Uh, virtually, we are happy to have you. Happy New Year. Our friends, Allow me to take some time just to appreciate uh, the servants of the Lord, the elders, the deacons, the deaconesses, all our departmental leaders, all council members, and all of you members of New Life Church for how you have served the Lord in the year 2021. I pray for God's blessings upon all of us now that he has brought us to see this year 2022, that he will give us the grace to serve him and even serve him better and more committedly and more joyfully, more generously in this year 2022. The Lord bless you and keep you. New Life Church. We thank God that we can be able to open our doors to each one and every one of us, both physically and virtually, because we live at a time when some you cannot go to some places unless you have a vaccination certificate. But here we can come without that certificate. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Yeah, I remember having gone to a certain mall this week and I was stopped uh, on the basis of not having vaccination certificates. I wondered why it had to be that way, because I know that we live in a country that is ruled by the law. And uh, the, our courts, whereas there was that desire to have everybody uh, vaccinated, if it were possible, and to be able to subjugate the citizenry to vaccination in case, just so that they qualify for government services, the courts overruled that matter. And uh, it was surprising that some places that was being exercised. I will only request our government to check on such people because I believe that it's not the government which is uh, enforcing that requirement. Uh, so that those who have not been vaccinated will not be discriminated against. When we read the word of God, the Bible presents to us many cases of people who are sick and sick of viral diseases. One among them that was very deadly was the leprosy. It is only those who suffered from these diseases who are required to go to, to quarantine. And uh, that is what the word of God says. The ones who are sick will need to be attended. But if I'm well, I should not be stopped to enjoy the services that are offered in any place. Uh, we pray that the government will help us so that those who are not vaccinated will not be discriminated against. It's actually against the will of God to force people to do a certain thing because even in his kingdom, he does not force us. He simply educates us and guides us to accept it. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, I invite us to consider the word of God from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 5. 
And our memory text is verse number 14. The word of God says, so he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the gift of life. We praise your name for the gift of salvation that is ours in Jesus. And we thank you for thy grace that has brought us to this new year 2022. We praise your name for the opportunity to spend time in the audience of your word. We pray, dear Father, that as we follow with this word that you will speak to each one and every one of us. Grant us the grace to behold and to be blessed of the revelations that you have tucked in this portion of the scripture, even as we begin this year 2022. In Jesus' name, we pray that you take full possession of these grounds for yourself and allow us only but to worship you. Make us available that the seed of your word will find a fertile ground in each one of our lives to bear fruits to our salvation, to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are considering only three verses this morning. It is family Sabbath. What that means is that we don't have service this afternoon. Each one of us after the service today will have the privilege and the opportunity and the chance to spend time with the families where we belong. The book of Joshua chapter 5, verse 13, 14, and 15 is our consideration this morning. And the Bible says, and it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the ground and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The book of Joshua is one of those books that you may want to consider for sure when you are at the beginning of something. And now that we are at the beginning of a new year, year 2022, it is one wonderful book that we can be able to draw lessons from and that can bless our lives. The reason being that the book of Joshua is about the beginning of the life of the children of Israel in their promised land. It is the beginning of the leadership of the servant of the Lord, Joshua, who takes over the mantle of leadership of the children of Israel from the servant of the Lord that had led the children of Israel through the wilderness, Moses. He is just beginning his leadership. And he is beginning his leadership at a critical point when the children of Israel are coming into the land that the Lord had promised them to settle them in. So it has two beginnings. 
beginning of the leadership of Joshua and beginning of the settlement of the children of Israel in the promised land. And as we come to the beginning of this year, there are myriads of lessons and revelations and gems for our consideration from this book of Joshua. The Holy Spirit has guided me to share with us from the verses 13, 14, and 15. Very key messages that you will find as we consider this portion of the scripture is the answer that the servant of the Lord, the angel, who appears to Joshua, gives to Joshua. And in this answer and in his conversation uh, with Joshua, he tells him three very important things. Of course, there is more, but we don't have time to be able to consider all of them. For this purpose, now we will consider his answer, no. And then he will take time to let him know who he was. He reveals his identity to Joshua. And there is a very great reason why he reveals his identity to Joshua. And then lastly, Joshua's response. So our three messages is no. Number two, commander of the hosts of the Lord. And then lastly, Joshua's response where Joshua in the last part of verse 15 says, and Joshua did so. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 13 opens to us by saying that, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and lo and behold, he saw a man standing there over against him with a sword drawn out in his hand. And Joshua quickly went to him and asked him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? There's so much we can say about Joshua before we come to expound on what we find in this verse. But I will only want to dwell on what is already revealed to us in the scripture. Joshua and the children of Israel up until this time, they have already crossed the Jordan River. They had approached the land of promise from the eastern side coming to the western side. You will know that they had been moving in the wilderness from Egypt. And God had guided them to come to the eastern side of River Jordan and walked up looking for the land of promise that the Lord had promised for them. And they had finally crossed with the help of God. That crossing itself was miraculous in its own way. The angel of the Lord who had been guiding the children of Israel had told Joshua that this is how you are going to cross this Jordan. For when they had gotten to Jordan, they wondered how they would cross. Yes, the journey of the children of Israel from Egypt to the land of promise was full of many things that they needed to overcome and to cross over. And one of those things the very last one was this river, Jordan. And God had told Joshua that you will bring the, the priests with the Ark of the Covenant to stand in the waters of Jordan. And the waters will stop at the moment they will get into the water. The water that was flowing downstream from the north, the north to the south will cease to flow. And the children of Israel will be able to cross. And so they surely had crossed. They had pulled some stones from the bed of the river, 12 of them to represent the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, and put them outside and put them together as 
a memory of this crossing exercise and the miracle of crossing that had been given them by the Lord. This crossing itself was a big encouragement to them. I see Joshua being motivated by the presence of God in helping them to cross River Jordan. So he was an encouraged person, even as they were on this side of River Jordan, on the western side of River Jordan. And as they are here on the western side of River Jordan, uh, God had guided him to ask the children of Israel to come for circumcision. And he circumcised all who were adults who needed to be circumcised to identify themselves with Abraham, a person of faith, that now they were also going to be a people of faith. These children of Israel who were crossing are not the same one who had come from Egypt. They were those who had been born in the wilderness and none of them had been circumcised. And this is the reason why the Lord wanted Joshua to do this to them, to initiate them into a people of faith. That they will walk by faith. You will remember that God had asked Abraham to circumcise because he had not walked by faith. He had tried to get a child by his own ability. And when he did that, he had to be cleansed from faithlessness and be brought to walk in faith. And so this were to put, be put to a similar situation as a symbol of a people who walk by faith. And so they are here and they are encamped in the place called Gilgal. That is one reality that we know about Joshua as he is by river, by the city of Jericho. One thing that could also be true to Joshua as he's by the city of Jericho is he is remembering the report that had been brought to him by the two spies that he had sent to go and spy out Jericho who had lodged at Rahab's house. And Rahab had given them the state of the city of Jericho. In the book of Joshua chapter 2 verse 10 and 11, she says, look, we have been hearing the story about you people. And when we have we heard this story of how God has helped you to cross the Red Sea on a dry ground, and how he gave you victory over the Amorites and the nations that lived on the western side of Jordan, the kings of the Amorites, Ok and Siho, there is no man in this city who still has strength in himself. All of us are fearful because of the story we have heard about you. So Joshua is aware of this reality. He's aware that the people in Jericho are fearful. Chapter 5 that we are considering today in the opening verse, verse of chapter 5, the Bible says, So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that their hearts melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. It's also been reported to Joshua and Josh is aware that the Amorites who are living on the western side of River Jordan, western side of River Jordan, and the Canaanites who are living towards the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, had heard how this God who had made these children of Israel to cross the Red Sea on dry ground has also made them to cross the River Jordan on dry ground. When they had this information, they suffered from fright. And Joshua is aware about this. In other words, 
there is obvious evidence of success of occupants of this land of promise that is clear in the mind of Joshua. The report of Rahab, this report in verse 1 of chapter 5, and the encouraging miracle of crossing River Jordan with the help of God. Joshua feels that there is sufficient evidence that will be able to occupy this land and overcome the people who live in this land with ease. But even as this is obvious, Joshua therefore takes a walk and he moves towards Jericho. The Bible says, and behold, Joshua, when Joshua was by Jericho, Joshua probably is coming to do a recognized sense, to do a survey of the city of Jericho, to find out how fortified it was, how strong it was, and to find out if there was any weak point on the walls of this city uh, through which they can be able to break in. And as Joshua is doing this, he's all out alone. The Bible says that he sees a man who is in a war combat and he has a sword already drawn out in readiness to fight. And Joshua, the Bible does not tell us that he was fearful, but courageously went to him and the Bible says Joshua said to him, are you for us? or for our adversaries. And uh, the angel of the Lord says, no. The angel of the Lord says, no. Is he saying no to say, no, I am not for you Israelites, or I am neither for the people who live in this land? And so what is he saying no to? Joshua's mindset as he approached this man was a mindset of you are either for us or for the other people. A mindset of either black or white. We live at a time when sometimes as we live, we see people in the light of either they are for us or against us. They are in our group or they are in the other group. I am aware of where we are coming from several years ago when we had issues as a church and we had to look at one another as whether you are in NCC or not in NCC. It was a difficult time. I am grateful that the Lord has come out of that situation. And those who are still there, we continue to pray that the Lord will help them. We are in a new year of campaign in our country. And we are going to do campaign. And the people will begin to see one another in terms of the political persuasion they belong to. Whether you belong to Asmio Laomoja or you belong to Hasla or you belong to Oka, we are going to see one another like that for some time. Sometimes we see one another across our tribal boundaries. But whereas Joshua was consumed by this presupposition and this mindset, this way of looking at life, whether this person was for him or for the adversaries, the person who had appeared to Joshua tells him, no. Allow me to observe that it was intentional. The angel of the Lord, who will identify himself as the commander of the hosts of the Lord, will let Joshua know that, look, I have not come as you want me to come. I only live for one thing, for the will of God. That is where I belong. And I command, I command things to see the will of God accomplished. And it has been the will of God for me to bring the children of Israel 
from bondage to the land of promise. And there is a particular way this will be done. And this is what I have come to take charge of. This is what I have come to command. This is what I have come to be captain of. The will of God to bring the children of Israel to the land of promise. And so he invites Joshua, I invite you to the will of God. At the beginning of the year, many of us have plans. And we go to the Lord and ask him to, play, to bless our plans. I hear in this revelation that the commander of the Lord's army tells Joshua, listen, my son and my daughter, it's not about me coming to bless your plans. No. It is not about me coming to bless the plans of the one you think he is your adversary. I exist for you to come into my will. I, I command the will of God. I captain the will of God. I am prince of the will of God. And I invite you into the will of God. Praise God. He says, Joshua, I am not coming to favor you or them. I have come to establish the will of God. I don't know how many plans that you have this year. Each one of us has some resolutions at the beginning of the year. We have had many times when people have plans, they will call for pastors and elders and the church to pray and bless their plans. But I hear from the word of God that is coming straight from his word, saying God will have us know that whereas he blesses, his blessings rests where his plan is. The Lord has invited us. The Lord has invited us to pray. To pray including for our plans and our resolutions. But in the book, in fact, in the New Testament, Jesus says, ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and it shall be opened for you. Seek and you shall do what? You shall find. But when it is left like that, many of us will be in trouble. The servant of the Lord John, uh, please come with me to the book of 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. 1 John eh, chapter 5 and verse 14. The book of John is towards the end of the Bible. We are reading the first letter of the servant of the Lord, John, and the fifth chapter of this book. And verse 14, the Bible says, Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything, we are invited to ask anything that we may wish. But he goes ahead to say, According to his will, he will hear. The servant of the Lord, the man, the commander of the hosts of the Lord who appears to Joshua will have Joshua know. Yes, Joshua, I know you have plans. But I have one grand plan. I want you to, I invite you to enter this one grand plan. If you're looking for blessings, if you're looking for success, I am success. I am I, I am the one who brings flourishing, but you have to get into this plan. You have to get into my will. If your plans are within the will of God, they are where him who commands success, who commands victory, who commands, who, who commands every blessing is if you put them in his will. And so he tells Joshua, Joshua, welcome into operating within my will. So as we make our plans this year, as we make our resolutions, resolutions to get married, good resolutions. Resolution to God to help you to find a job, good resolutions. And the Lord is willing to bless you in your plans. But God will have us remember this one thing, that your plans 
and your resolutions will better be blessed and will be victorious and successful as they are operating in the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he tells Joshua, no. It is not in another person's will, but in God's will, the one whom I command for. Welcome into his will. Joshua, you may have your strategy of bringing down this city, but I have a plan on how it will be brought down. There is a will that I have which will ensure that this is done. You as Joshua is to enter into this plan. And Joshua, the Bible says, uh, he was happy to be guided this way. Praise the name of the Lord. Your plans and my plans are successful as they remain in the will of who? Of God. Even when they seem like they are weak, but they are operating in the will of God, they are successful. Even when they look weak, but they are operating in the will of God, they are victorious. Praise the name of the Lord. The people who study the Bible and who listen to stories like this and how it will be that just going around the city of Jericho will bring victory, cast aspersions and say, how can you win victory just by walking around something? But the word of God will say that the ways of God are way above our human ways. Human understanding may find it difficult, may even look at it and say that plan will not work. But if it is according to the will of God, it will work, it will be successful, it will be victorious because it is in the will of who? In the will of God. So, cast your plans, but in the will of God. Do your aspirations, but in the will of God. Those of us who are sitting for examination this year, study hard, but study according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Looking for a wife, but walk and look as according to the will of God. Looking for a job, but look for a job in the will of God. You can get a job. You can get any job. But if it is not in the will of God, you can be sure it will not be successful. It will not be victorious. It is only successful and victorious and a blessing when it is in the will of God. The Bible says, then he decided to reveal himself to Joshua and said, no, but as commander of the hosts of the Lord, I have now come. Quickly, let me first dispense with the first aspect of I have now come. Joshua, going by what he had already heard, what he had already seen, the information that was already clear to him, that is sufficient evidence that we can be able to conquer this land. He did not begin the exercise yet. He needed a signal from the one who had been bringing them. And uh, this signal finally comes. There are many of us who are quick to do things without having the signal. The Lord will have us reminded this year, so begin this year, that it is the will of God that we wait for him to say, I have now come. You have wonderful plans. And going by the, what I see, evidence is that you can be successful. But don't start yet until you receive a signal from him who is commanding those things that happen in the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he tells Joshua, as commander of the hosts of the Lord, I have now come. This person who appears before Joshua, you will happy, you'll be happy to know that this is not the only place where a human being comes into encounter with, with another being that is not terrestrial, but rather who, according to the description put around him, is celestial. Uh, this being that comes to Joshua, this man that appears before Joshua, and who identifies himself as the commander of the hosts of the Lord, uh, is what you call in the, 
in theology, theophany. And theophany is simply an appearance, an appearance of God, the pre-incarnate Christ, uh, the Christ appearing in the human body before he was uh, literally born here for our salvation. There are many cases in the Bible when angels and terrestrial bodies, terrestrial beings appear to God's children, to humanity. And among these ones, you will find, uh, say, for example, in the book of Judges, you have the story of the angel of the Lord who appeared to the wife of Manoah. You have this appearing, this kind of appearing also to Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 17, uh, verse number 1, verse 3. The Bible says, you can go with me there, Genesis chapter 17, and he will also appear in Genesis chapter 18. But in chapter 17, uh, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me, be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will multiply, and, and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. We find Abraham seeing God, uh, uh, God coming to Abraham. Uh, but in chapter 18, he comes in a human body and Abraham receives him. Uh, in chapter 19 of the book of Genesis, these seven same heavenly bodies will appear to the nephew of Abraham, Lord, in Sodom and Gomorrah on mission to save are those who could be saved from Sodom and Gomorrah. There are many occasions in the Bible where celestial beings who appear to human beings in a human body on this planet Earth. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5, Daniel tells us of also seeing an angel appear to him who explained the things to him. The book of Daniel, will you please read with me? Daniel chapter 10 and verse number 5. Daniel chapter 5 and Daniel chapter, five, chapter 10 and verse number 5. Daniel chapter 10 and verse number 5. The Bible says, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was guarded with gold of Athos, appeared to me. This is Daniel. And John the Revelator will also give us several accounts of how he saw an angel appear to him. Uh, but there are two things that I want us to consider. Some of these celestial beings that appear in a human body to human beings in the Bible, some of them were actually angels. But some of them were actually not angels. It was the Lord Jesus himself, the pre-incarnate Christ before he came to be born on this planet Earth. And it is that pre-incarnate Christ who appeared to Abraham in chapter 17, the book of Genesis. And he tells him that I will bless you. And verse 3 of chapter 17 says, and, and, and Abraham worshipped him. Uh, follow that idea of Abraham worshipping him. Because we also see Joshua worshipping this man who appeared to him and who identified himself as the commander of the host of the Lord. It is not every time a celestial being appearing in a human body is worshipped and he will accept worship. The book of Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 5, uh, chapter 10, verse 5, when you read down, he, uh, read with me, read me, just read with me the book of Revelation that will do for us. 
as an evidence of not every time they appear. Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 10. Revelations, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Revelation 19 and verse 10. Revelation 19. Revelation 19 and verse 10. The Bible says, This is John giving us an account, and I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Uh, this particular celestial being that had appeared to John in Revelation, while when John wanted to worship him, he said, don't worship, because he was an angel. The point I want to send home is that not every time a celestial being in a human body appears to human being is necessarily an angel. There are some who are angels and others were not angels. And who was this that was not the angel? It was actually Christ himself who could be able to accept worship. In Genesis chapter 17 and verse number 3 that we read, Abraham worshipped and he was not stopped. In the book of Exodus, when this um, celestial being appeared to Moses in the burning bush, the Bible tells us that Moses fell on his face to worship, and the worship was received. In fact, he went ahead and told him, the place you are standing is holy ground, because it is God himself who is here. The point I want to bring home is this, that this person, this commander of the Lord's host, who appeared to Joshua was Christ himself who had come to the aid of Joshua and the children of Israel in occupying the land of promise. This, I will take you shortly through the words of the Lord, how he had guided Moses on how the appearance of his angel will be with them in the wilderness. Come with me to the book of Exodus chapter uh, uh, 14 and verse 19. Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 19. The Bible says, 14, 19, the Bible says, And the angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before them and stood behind them. There is an angel of the Lord who had been moving with the children of Israel as they left Egypt. And his presence was made manifest in the cloud as a cover for them from the scorching sun of the desert and a pillar of fire in the evening, in the night to give them warmth and also to act as protection against the wild animals. Chapter 23, the book of Exodus, this angel is explained even further. Chapter 23, the book of Exodus, uh, beginning from verse number 20, the Bible says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he, is not, he will not pardon your transgressions. For by name, for my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and adversary to your adversaries. Verse 23 says, For the angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. This angel had already been uh, introduced to the children of Israel early that he will go ahead of you. This angel who receives worship, I submit he is Christ himself uh, who is able to receive worship. And so he is the one who had come to Joshua and he tells Joshua as commander of the hosts of the Lord I have now come 
to bring you, as I promised in Exodus chapter 23, verse 23, that I'll bring you into this land of promise. I have now come to command the settlement of you in this land that I promised to your fathers. I have come to take control. I have come to take over. I have come to captain you settling down in this land. I hear the Lord saying, look, um, you have good plans. You have good resolutions. Just as Christ was available to take over, to command their settlement in this land of promise, to captain their taking over this land, he is also available for us to overcome whatever is ahead of us, to be successful in the plans that we have as they remain in the will of God. He is available today as he was available that time for the children of Israel. If you are willing, it is not always that when an offer like this is made, we may want to take it. We have our passionate plans, sometimes which are in competition with the will of God. Surely, when we, they remain in competition and we remain holding upon them, he cannot command, he cannot command, he cannot captain, he cannot be prince in those plans that are in competition with his will. He will command those plans. He will command uh, those resolutions that are in the will of God. He will take over to captain them to success and to victory. And so he offers Joshua an opportunity as commander of the hosts of the Lord. These hosts will be reference of the heavenly hosts, the children of Israel, and the rest of us who will become believers who like to be commanded by him are his hosts. He is our commander if we are willing to allow him to command our victory, to command our success. He is willing. Are you willing? As he was available for the children of Israel and offered to take over, he is available to take over our situation even today. Joshua very quickly perceived what was happening. He quickly accepted that the one who has been walking with us in the wilderness all along is finally here to make it work for us to settle in this land, including bringing down Jericho. And he gave Joshua instruction on how Jericho was going to be brought down. He gave him instructions, and he will be giving instructions on how we are to live in the blessings of settling in our promise for the year 2022. Joshua quickly accepted, and he said, he said to him, my Lord, what have you to say to your servant? There are many, all of us have plans and our plans are good, but they will be successful and God will command their success and he will command their victory as they remain in the will, in his will. Joshua accepted. I stand here today on this first day of January 2022 to also say that as church, New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church, I want to submit myself that I will not do my plans, but I will do the plans of God. I may have my wish, but I will let go of my wish in favor of what God's will is. Because I know that is where blessings are. I know that is where success is. And that is what I will follow. As a church, we may, be, we may come up with many plans. And our plans can only be according to the will of God. And when they remain in the will of God, God says he takes over and he commands their success and their, their victory. And he says he will captain them to the very end. I want to request that we will be willing as a church to walk in the will of God and ask God to be the command of our plans, to be the captain of our plans, 
and to be the prince of our plans, that it will only be the plans of God, not our plans. Hallelujah. This way we will not fight because we will only be asking a question, is it the plan of God? And we say, yes. Then we give it to the owner to command it to success, to prince it to success, to captain it to victory. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but as Joshua submitted and he said, my Lord, what word do you have for your servant? And I also submit. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Lord was not done with Joshua. He went ahead to let Joshua know that he was actually God himself, the pre-incarnate Christ, and told him, remove the sandals that are on your feet. For the place where you stand is but ho holy. The Bible will let us know that whereas we are quick to do the work of God, we will need to appreciate that the owner of those plants is holy and that we will need to take time to know him before we can go and do his work. Joshua was ready to go and lead the children of Israel in settling down in this land of promise. But the angel of the Lord, the commander of the hosts of the Lord tells him, remove your shoes. In other words, he is letting him know who he is. The Lord will want us to know him first before we can go and do his work. Hallelujah. For we will not do his work and do it well if we do not know who he is and the holy person that he is. The place where you stand, Joshua, is holy ground. Even as we plan to serve God, he will want us to know that he will want us to know him first before we can go and do his work. I purpose this year that even as I will make myself available to do his work, that first and foremost, I will find time to know him so that this way I may walk in his will because this is how he operates. He wants us to do the work, but before we can do it, he wants us to know him that he is who? He's holy. He's holy. I'll want to know the Lord first before I do the work of the Lord. The commander of the Lord's army tells Joshua, I am holy. The place where you stand is holy. By his accepting the worship of Joshua meant that he is holy and only him he was worthy of worship. God will want us to know him as holy first before we can go and do his work. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Who will say together with me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the revelation. And I pray that my good plans that I have will not be in competition with your will. Those ones that are in competition with your will, I drop them and drop them quickly and drop them today and now. Those that are in accordance with your will, I submit them to you. And as you offer to Joshua and the children of Israel to be captain, to be commander, and the prince of that which is in your will, I pray, Lord, that you command them. Because I know in your hands, commanded by you, princed by you, captained by you, they will be successful. Grant me the grace to walk only in your will. As a human being, I have these weaknesses of sinfulness and sometimes my desires, my plans and my resolutions are in competition with your will. I drop everything that is in competition with your will and accept only that which is according to your will. And dear Lord, now take over. As you took over for the children from the children of Israel, take over my issues. Take over. And as you asked Joshua, to remove his shoes from his feet because the place where he was standing was a holy place to let him know that whereas he was ready to go and do his, your work, he needed to know you first and foremost. 
I also make myself available this year and say, Lord, before I will go to do your work, I will seek to know you first. In the holiness that you are, that in your holiness I will do that work. Let me see by a show of hand those who join with me to say, please, Lord, commander of the Lord's host, take over and command my life and my plans and my resolutions. I submit them. Only those that are in your will. If this is your prayer, shall you stand up for a word of prayer? Let's believe and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, yes. the only name that is given for our salvation, we come to you this afternoon to thank you for giving us an opportunity to step into 2022. Father, we, we have come as young people, as old people, all of us we have come. Because you told Moses to leave Egypt and to go and pray, worship you and to go with everything. And so, Lord, we want to come to you as a family and as believers of New Life SDA Church. Father, we come knowing that you have forgiven us and you have brought us to this place of worship. Father, thank you for your leading in 2021. We thank you, Lord, for leading us in the valley and also in the mountain tops. Father, you did not abandon us when our enemies came for us. You rescued us, and we come thanking you for your goodness. Above all, Lord, you have given us the grace that is in Jesus Christ. The grace that we have not done anything to deserve. Father, we thank you for the way you led us. And Lord, now Lord, that you have come so that you may lead us in 2022. We want to welcome you and accept you to be with us in this year. Father, we pray in this year that we will be led of you. Father, we may have had our own plans, our own resolutions, but Father, we want to put them at your feet that you may direct us. Father, we ask that in this year, 2022, we may know you and work with you closely. Father, that we may know your will for us in 2022. That you may know, we may know your purpose for us in new life in 2022. Father, we ask in our various departments, in the children's department, in the men's department, in the women's department, and all departments that you may know your will for us this year. Father, we ask that we may work closer to you this year than we have done before, so that we may do your bidding, and that you may be with us and accomplish the bidding that you've given unto us. Father, we thank you for the opportunities that you have placed before us. Opportunities in our homes, even to do your bidding in your homes. Father, we pray that in our homes, O oh Lord, may we, when we rise, may we do your will. And Father, we ask, even when we go to places of work, the places of abode, and places where we do the um, occupations, Father, may we do your bidding in those places. Father, we ask that may you lead us in everything that we do. And Lord, may your blessings accompany us. Father, we do not want to move as Moses prayed that I will not go if we are not with us and not leading with us. And Lord, as even Joshua worshipped you, Father, we want to worship you because you deserve our honor and all our glory. Father, we ask that this year of 2022, Father, as a church, we pray that you will be our leader in everything that we do. That we will surrender. We will surrender all our will at your feet, O oh Lord. And we may accept that which is of you, O oh Lord. And now, Lord God, we pray a blessing for this congregation. There are those who are able to come to the worship with us today. 
Father, we want to ask that you may bless them. There are those who have been here physically. Father, we pray that you may bless them. We pray also for those who have been following us online that you may bless them. We pray for the leadership of this church. We pray for pastors who are here. We also remember Pastor Samuel Law, who is also not here with us today. Father, we pray that you may bless him and bless him abundantly. There are many others, O oh Lord, that we have not mentioned by name. Father, you do know all of them by name. May you bless them in the year 2022. May you make them and expand their territories for your kingdom. May they, O oh Lord, be led of you in their businesses, in their work, and may they look back and say, indeed, the Lord has been with us. The Lord has been our Ebenezer. The Lord has been our provider in everything that we do. Father, be glorified, be lifted up, because we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Precious Father, we are thankful today because of your goodness. Lord, you've told us in your word that you've loved us with an everlasting love. By the testimony of your word, Lord, we've known that you've been with your generations through the years in even epiphanic appearances. We thank you for this presence. It is indeed a privilege. The presence that was manifest in the burning bush, the presence that was manifest when Joshua set out to accomplish the mission you had given him. And in the last days, Lord, you've told us that you'll be with us even to the end of the age. We want to stand here, Lord, to claim these promises, to claim that in a special way you continue to be with us. But even more importantly, Lord, we want to claim that through the working of your Holy Spirit, Remind us of this presence, for often we do forget. Remind us from within our homes that those of us, and indeed all of us, whom you have called to the ranks of your forces, O thou who is the commander of the heavenly hosts, need to know that you are the Lord God, that in the spaces of our homes you stand and these places are holy places. We want, Lord, to Remind us in our prayer cells that every place that is called by your name, every single prayer cell that is called to our, as a local church by your name, your presence is there with them. And that they be reminded through the working of the Holy Spirit that you indeed are there and that place is holy. Remind us when we step through the gates of this place that is called by your name that you claim this to you in holiness. And therefore, this place is also holy. Remind us to remove the sandals of our selfishness. Remind us to remove the sandals of our pride. Remind us to remove the sandals of our tribalism. Remind us to remove the sandals of our status. Remind us to remove all manner of sandals that are bare the dirt with which we come before your holy presence. And present us renewed before you in holiness. How we pray, Lord, that as we start this year, that you may give us the first rain and even the latter rain, that we might be imbued and led only by you in everything that we do. Many of us have been called to step forward as leaders to serve in your presence. Teach us that which you taught the disciples, Lord, to serve in humility. Teach us to wash each other's feet, to cover each other's sin, and to uphold each other's uplifted before you, seeking forgiveness and seeking edification. Teach us, Lord, how to serve Give us your word in our hearts that we might have a word in good season for every person in need. Teach us, Lord, to be faithful even in that which we do in our tithing, in our offerings, and even in our service. We pray, Lord, in a special way for every child in this congregation that they might hear your voice beckoning them, not just through the voices of their parents, but even through the services of this church. We pray for every youth and their aspirations, who are going through different seasons of youth, that you might be their guide and guardian. We pray for young people who are beginning their careers and professions, aspiring to start families. We place them in your hand, Lord, that may you guide them. We pray for couples, young couples, old couples, that you stand with them, O oh Lord, each one of them, because we know that the marauding evil one 
He's gone into every homestead and seeking to break marriages and seeking to break families. How we pray for your covering and protection. We pray for the older ones, that they might impart wisdom and words of encouragement and good counsel to the young one, that they might lead by example, even Lord, as you led us by example. And we pray especially for the leadership of the church, that they might lead also by example. They might lead us inspired by you in spirit and guide you. May it be, Lord, our portion that at the end of this year, we shall stand here and give such testimony as we're giving today of your goodness in the past year. And that we shall be lift you up and give testimonies as we have had today that you've indeed been faithful for us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And Lord, <clears throat> we continue to worship you to say thank you. Behold your children, we stand on our feet in submission as your servant Joshua submitted when he was guided to understand that you had come as commander of the hosts of the Lord, you who commands heaven and also commands this earth, and who is happy to command the lives of those who believe in you, to take over for them situations that would otherwise be difficult to make them easy. We are standing on our feet, dear Father, to admit like Joshua, to accept that we will not go about it this year, 2022, and the many years that you will give us as it will please us. Indeed, Lord, we have plans, but we have been guided by your word that whereas plans are good, plans will be successful, and there is where you, you live. You live in your plan, in your will, and if our plans are within your will, they are blessed because you take over you command success on them. You command blessings on them. You command victory on them. As your children, Lord, we submit ourselves to you that we will live in accordance with your will. Like Joshua accepted your will, we also accept your will. And we lay our plans within your will. We plan our plans within your will. We commit to live our lives according to your will. And as it was for the children of Israel, uh, you saw them eventually when they accepted your commanding and you saw them settle down in the promised land. May you settle us in victories. May you settle us in uh, blessings. In, uh, may you settle us in flourishing even as we remain in your plans this year and the years that you will allow us to live. Dear Father, we thank you because you were happy to let Joshua know that as he was willing and ready to go and work, he needed to know you in your holiness. You took your time to identify yourself to him. And by extension, Lord, it is your pleasure that even as we are desirous to do your work, that we will know the holy being that you are and that we will take time first and foremost to worship you before we can be able to go and do this work. Experience you in your holiness. And therefore, this way, be able to go to do this work in the holiness of the person that you were. This being uh, the experience of your servant Joshua and for the children of Israel, we pray that it will be exp our experience also. I pray for your blessings upon each one and every one of us as you keep us in your will and in your blessings and in your holiness. I pray, Lord, for your blessings upon our country, Kenya, that you will bless it in a special way. This indeed is a year that is heavy laden with many things. We pray for your blessings upon those who are sitting for various examinations. The KCSE examinations twice this year, the KCP examination, and the CBC examination. May you bless our children. May you see them turn out successful passing with flying colors to the glory and honor of your name. Father, we pray for your peace in our country, even as we do politics. And we pray that eventually when all is said and done and we have and a leader has been elected, that it will be your own leader who will lead this country according to your will. It is our prayer in Jesus' name.